To me, it seems that companies are in a huge rush to apply AI to absolutely everything, and now it's become saturated and overhyped. Maybe some people use it to get more done at work, but the question remains, do we want it as part of our maker hobby, and is it already too late? Let me be upfront with my bias. I'm generally not a fan of AI. I don't use it for anything, but I'm fully aware that perhaps I'm in the minority. So today I'll give my reasons for that and then explore if it has any place in the maker scene. For a long time, AI was seen more as a science fiction thing. And for most people, what probably changed that perception was generative AI like ChatGPT. The ability to simply enter a prompt and have the AI spit out a seemingly human-like response right out of thin air seemed a huge step forward and it gained a lot of attention, understandably. One night, back in 2023, which is early enough that ChatGPT couldn't create images yet, my family and I had a play with the technology. My wife is also a teacher, so we asked it to create a lesson plan and the output was pretty impressive, although not quite right. My son, who was 10 at the time, asked it to create a fanfiction about Fortnite and he was super impressed and my daughter, who was then 12, was also impressed by its output. I tested it with some fitness questions, and again the output was quite reasonable, but despite being bemused, that's where I left it. But of course, things have advanced a lot. It can now generate images and even video. And to be honest, this is my favorite use of AI, silly things that are funny and obviously so. But generative AI is used for a lot more than this. In fact, we're pretty much seeing it everywhere. Most search engines now have an AI overview, and if you try to Google how to turn it off, the instructions instead send you to even more AI. If you join a Zoom call, well, that's got AI as well. There's AI plugins for many pieces of software, and machine learning is used to make self-driving cars. Basically, it's everywhere. And I can't deny that AI is capable of doing a lot of good in the world. But for every feel-good story like this, there's an horrific one where AI goes wrong, in some cases doing irreparable harm. For me, AI is still wildly unpredictable and not trustworthy. And since most of the world has not caught up with regulation, the consequences can be significant. Plus there's the erosion of trust from low quality AI slop flooding the internet. And surely things will go downhill as AI trains on its own output. As I shared with my patrons, I've actually been back in the classroom for a minimum of two days a week for the last couple of months. And that was the final nail in the AI coffin for me. This is the learning pit and it's a concept educators are very familiar with. In short, it's a journey about when you face something new, you struggle, but through problem solving and practice, you start to understand and you emerge on the other side with a new set of knowledge and skills. And unfortunately, what I've observed over and over is ChatGPT offering a shortcut to the answer without any learning, thinking or analysis taking place. The majority of students put the question into it, but rather than actually reading through the answer, they'll just say, brah, shorter. And I wish I was joking here, but they're looking for the shortest version possible for the least amount of thinking. They'll do this repeatedly over and over until they can get something that fits on the screen, which they'll then copy and paste into their digital workbook. Getting students to show their work in maths has always been a problem, but now this is exaggerated greatly. They'll take a screenshot of the textbook, paste it into ChatGPT, and then all of the answers will be spat out the other end. Except they're not doing this to try and understand the process. They just want to get directly to the answers to once again, copy them into their book or copy and paste them into a document. And as a teacher, this is depressing and fills me with dread over how competent future generations will be when it's their turn to run the world. Let me summarize. There's people in industry who already have the skills and knowledge required. So if they do use AI, it's only to make them more productive. But what I fear is people using AI to reach those qualifications and then relying heavily on it as they're doing their job. If the output is wrong, they just won't have the skills and knowledge to be able to identify it. Anyway, enough ranting. Let's look at how AI is integrated into the maker hobby. Our first area is coming up with project ideas. And considering this is a hobby, I would hope AI is never needed here. You can ask ChatGPT for project ideas, but surely that's not needed. There's plenty of channels like myself on YouTube that create compilations of projects you can recreate. And beyond that, all you need to do is browse a file sharing site like Printables or Maker World. There you're surely to find so much inspiration and something that really takes your fancy. For me, on the YouTube side, I've recently learnt that YouTube offers an AI service to generate video ideas for you. 
Now the funny thing for me is that a lot of these ideas are videos I've already made or made something very similar to. And you can refresh as many times as you like and it will keep on pumping out ideas. However, I don't think it's that smart. It's just labeling me as 3D printing and then doing variations on popular videos of late. If you click on any of them, it will break it down section by section. And I guess this is useful for some people, but it's not of interest to me. I personally prefer to stick to projects that I'm genuinely interested in, not ones that are fed to me. Okay then, so how about coding? And it's not something I cover a lot on the channel, but I do do it from time to time. My website is all written in HTML, with the calibration sequences saved as really long strings in JavaScript before JavaScript is used to manipulate the G-code to the user specifications. But I don't think that's very representative, so instead let's look at Arduino. For this, I gave a simple test. Write me Arduino code for playing MIDI music with the Tone Library. I have to say it mostly did a good job here, with code that was well commented to explain what was happening, and all of the required sections there, nicely formatted and easy to follow. For anyone who's used Arduino a few times, this is going to be pretty easy to work with. But one major thing missing was a diagram on how to connect external hardware to the Arduino board. I saw in the code that pin 8 was the speaker output and connected the other end of the speaker back to ground. So this simple test passed with flying colours, but I wouldn't necessarily use ChatGPT for coding. And that's because when I'm doing an Arduino project, I'm doing it as a hobby, and I'm all about the journey, not just the destination. For me, coding an occasional project is kind of like doing Sudoku. I see it as a puzzle and I enjoy the challenge. I'm happy to embrace that learning pit because I know how satisfying it will be once I get the project working. So in my case, I'd rather find a tutorial that explains everything, has proper instructions for how to make connections, get that working and then modify the code until it suits my requirements. A lot of the coding projects I do involve me finding a suitable library, starting with their tutorials and going from there. So from an enthusiast point of view, I'm not interested in using AI for coding projects, but maybe I'm in the minority, let me know in the comments. So on to something that I don't think anyone takes joy from, and that's sitting there watching the printer, waiting for any errors. The majority of modern 3D printers now have inbuilt cameras so you can see what's going on. This is great for time lapses, but also for AI to do its thing and look after our printers while we can't be there. The first system I'm aware of like this was called the Spaghetti Detective, which has since been rebranded as Obico. To test it out, I uploaded this time lapse of a Benchy, where the print most definitely detached. Obico successfully detected that there was a failure, so I gave it the feedback it needed to confirm those results. And they've since expanded to include support for nozzle cameras. This allows the print quality of the first layer in particular to be studied quite closely and any immediate or potential failures identified. This technology has since been adopted by larger 3D printer manufacturers with mixed results. For instance, the Ankermake M5 has the camera positioned in a peculiar space. So its approach is to generate an AI preview of what the model should look like from that particular viewpoint. The printer can then compare what it sees mid-print versus what was expected in the images. In my testing, I didn't find this particularly effective, mainly because it wasn't sensitive enough. It would take way too long for the spaghetti to be detected and the print stopped. More recently, I tested the H2D from Bamboo Lab that has cameras next to the nozzle for nozzle clumping detection, as well as a chamber camera for spaghetti detection. This time, I found both of these a little too sensitive, but at least in this case, you can tune the sensitivity or turn the features off if you like. In my opinion, this is a great use of AI. It doesn't detract from my experience or my learning. It's also optional, but when working, should cut down on waste. And this brings us to the big one, 3D modeling. And one of the things that prompted me to make this video is that I notice all of a sudden on printables, there's an influx of AI generated content, but at least there is a way to filter it out. Now I'm a firm believer that you'll get a lot more out of any maker hobby if you're designing your own parts, which is why I've got a long playlist on how to do so for free with Onshape but I understand some people find this very hard and don't want to go into the learning pit, so what shortcuts are available for them? We know ChatGPT is reasonable at code, so I asked it to generate the code for a five-bladed turbine for OpenSCAD. And I actually had pretty high expectations for this because I've heard of people doing it before. So let's just say I found the output from ChatGPT quite underwhelming. I'm pretty sure I asked for a turbine, not a ceiling fan, and it's got lots of other issues as well. I tried tweaking the parameters to fix it, but I only managed to make it worse. I gave it a few chances to get it done, but it didn't really improve. 
If anything, I would say it degraded and the results got much less printable. So let's look at something purposely made. MechAgent is an AO co-pilot for Mechanical CAD. And I have to say, it looks quite impressive from the demo video available on their website. In this video, it's integrated with SolidWorks and a prompt is given for a part that needs to be created after two surfaces are selected. After some thinking time, the AI returns with three possible design variations that can be optimized in terms of material, cost and manufacturing technique. My patrons and I actually gave feedback on this in its early stages. This image here provided by my patron Derek and it seems to have come a long way since then but this is not available to the public yet, so let's keep looking. In my research, I came across this video by Gleb Alexandrov. In it, he demos Spark 3D, and I'd say this is the equivalent of an AI photogrammetry, except it only needs one image. And once that's provided, a 3D model will be generated, and the impressive part is it will create geometry even for the sides that weren't pictured in the image. The best part is there's a live demo that you can use for free and I tested this out with an image of my race car to see how good a 3D model it could generate. This is free but popular enough that there's people in the queue and you have to wait your turn. And in my case that wait was around 40 minutes. After that the actual model generation is only 1 or 2 minutes. And then all of a sudden the model is displayed in your browser. You can spin the camera there but I think it's easier to download and look from a better program. Firstly, can I say that overall this is stupidly impressive from just a single image, and all sides of the car have been filled in, despite my prompt image not being particularly detailed. But if I was looking for accuracy, this is just not there. As you can see, there's quite a lot of unnecessary texture on what should be flat surfaces, and where detail in the image wasn't available, Spark 3D has estimated and this means there's some pretty crazy stuff going on. For instance, this suspension geometry is all over the place, probably the equivalent, of when AI image generators stuff up hands. I guess like any AI, it's drawing on a pool of material it was trained from, and that's why we get an F1 style beam wing, a strange folded over mirror, and a helmet that can be described as steampunk. In terms of 3D printability, if we open the model in Mesh Mixer, we can see there's a lot of little holes, and that means the file is not manifold. This is possibly because I had to convert the format to STL. Mesh Mixer has a one-click auto repair all feature, and this seemed to get rid of 90%, and the rest I could click to fix myself. So I guess with a lot of support material, you could 3D print this. But realistically, it's better for a video game or something like that. One more from Bamboo Lab, and that's Print Mon Maker, an AI tool to make a cute character and host it on Maker World. This one is free, assuming you're happy to sign in with the Maker World account. And to generate your Print Mon, we have several options. We can use a text prompt, upload an image, or use a combination of the two. I started by asking for something pretty standard, an image of Sam Prentice mixed with a tiger. And it just spat out a cartoon tiger. I guess somehow it doesn't know who Sam Prentice is. So I went back to the start and this time uploaded a picture of Sam. And what it came back with, I have to say, was pretty generic. Just a regular screaming face that didn't look that much like him. I went through several more versions and then hatched this one to try it properly. This is the stage that generates a 3D colored model. Clicking confirm prompts you to pay for the model by using Maker World credits. I guess you start with some because I've never done any activity on Maker World. From here you can inspect the model and set how many colors you want to form it. When you're happy, you can then click export where a 3MF will be prepared as well as some other files. And as the prompt says, you will need to do some cleaning up in your slicer to get the multicolor printing right. And that's exactly what I did. Like a lot of things AI at the moment, it got things most of the way, but the fine details were not quite there. So human intervention was warranted to get everything right. To complete my testing, I actually printed this, taking around 9 hours on the H2D using 5 colours. After peeling off the support material and brim, we can inspect the model properly. I guess this is novel that this was made from effectively nothing, and it would probably benefit from more prompting to customise. Unfortunately, with these proportions, it has zero chance of ever standing up by itself. I'm not going to lie, some of this is really impressive to me, but it's still nowhere near replacing actually doing the CAD myself, for my projects at least. And that's partially down to the quality of the output, but also due to the satisfaction of doing the work myself. Here's a few other things that we need to consider. Of course, there's other uses, like my patron Derek here, using ChatGPT to assist them with their Clipper configuration. But I think that type of general researching and troubleshooting applies to anything, not just our hobby. Now, a big part of our community is sharing models and projects online. And because of that, an important topic is licensing. Some version of a Creative Commons license is very popular. And typically, that stipulates that you can't share without attributing the original author. 
Of course, these AI models have to be trained on something. So while it seems convenient to be given code, a 3D model or an image that works out of the box, the reality is that this is generated from the work of people who have not been compensated, attributed, and certainly haven't been asked for permission. For a community that values open source so much, this is a major issue. And that's why I'd rather pay a talented artist or modeler for their files than use AI models for free. So to sum up my position, this is my hobby. So I wanna actually do the work myself. I'm not looking for shortcuts. More broadly, I think AI is here to stay, but it's so saturated and hyped that the bubble will surely burst. But that's just my opinion, and I'm keen to know what you think. Let me know, are you also sick of AI? And do you use it as a maker or for your other hobbies? Thanks to my patrons for assisting with this video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy making and 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.